It's been a great week in the world of photography for Mark McGee. Firstly, I was invited to the Sony a7 IV Roadshow to be one of the first to try out the long-awaited successor to the Sony a7 III. Adobe released the latest version of Lightroom, which has got me all excited. And this arrived in the post, which I'm gonna show you at the end of the video. Just gonna put this on the desk. <laughs> Looks good. Play tape. Adobe Lightroom have introduced a couple of great new features into their latest update. And one of them is the new masking feature, which is quite a move towards Photoshop's subject selection AI engine. And it's super quick and surprisingly accurate. And it could change the way you think about how you edit your photographs. Let's check it out. Here's a picture I took of an abandoned church in Killarney National Park in Southern Ireland. The church and the foreground are exposed well, but the sky is a little blown out. The new masking feature makes it a doddle to bring back detail into the sky without affecting the rest of the image. If we head up to where the gradient and radial filters used to be, we now have this new icon which opens up a brand new drop down menu, which includes the select subject mask and select sky mask, plus some other options you'll probably recognize like the brush tool, linear gradient, radial, and finally color range and luminance range, etc. So let's select the sky mask. And in less than two seconds, we now have a mask of the sky, which allows us to make adjustments without affecting the rest of the image. And we also now have a Photoshop style layer system, which gives us a better visual workflow. We can change the mask color to our own preference. I'm gonna go for a nice red color and we can switch off the overlay while we make the changes. Reduce highlights and exposure a touch. Increase clarity for more detail in those clouds and get rid of the grungy texture that clarity produces. Now, increasing dehaze is a very powerful tool but can oversaturate colors. So I'll desaturate for a more filmic look. And we can use the eye icon to deactivate the mask to see what progress we've made so far. And within a few seconds, we've added a huge amount of drama without compromising the rest of the image. Now, trees always pose a bit of a problem for Lightroom and Photoshop alike when it comes to sky selection or sky replacement. So let's see if we can tidy things up a bit. By clicking on the mask and add button, let's choose the brush tool and set the flow to about 50% and paint in gradually some of the adjustments we created on the sky layer. And the same for this tree here. You can also rename these mask layers just like in Photoshop. Now let's create a new mask for the church by using select subject. And really quickly, that's done an impressive job. Now a little overspill in the foliage here, which we can take care of by clicking on the mask and using subtract and the brush tool. Okay, perfect. So let's make some adjustments to the church. Bring the whites down a touch, some clarity, some dreamy texture, and that's looking good. A standard radial filter to add some background haze to the image by reducing clarity and texture. And of course, a touch of negative dehaze. Let's rename the layer to background haze and tidy up this layer too. Some other additions to Lightroom are a bunch of new presets, which are really quite effective. Cinematic ones work really well for this image. But let's take a look at the landscape. Now landscape seven works well for me with maybe an autumnal color change to the grass. So let's bring some warm tones into those greens and yellows. A touch more saturation, but say we want even more punch in that grass. We can use color range to target the grass and then refine the range so nothing else is included in the mask. About 17 works well. We'll switch off the overlay so we can see what changes we're making. Some dehaze, more overall saturation, a little more contrast using the black slider, and finally change the hue to that deep autumnal red. And one more gradient filter to draw the eye into the picture. So let's take another example of using these masks. Here's a picture of my lovely girl down in Leon C. I'd like to create a bit more separation and cinematic quality to this image. I'll start by using the select subject. And boom, a perfect mask in about a second. A bit of clarity and shadows lift. 
Now let's create another select subject mask, but this time invert the selection. Now we can do the reverse and take away some of the clarity and texture and negative dehaze to create depth in the background. But as you can see, we've lost detail in the wooden pier. A really simple fix we can use is intersect mask with a gradient filter. But because we're working on the inverted mask, we need to also make the gradient inverted too. Then simply bring back the detail by drawing the gradient over that section. Same too for the horizontal section of wood. Now we can play around with the mask to achieve the desired look without affecting my wife or the foreground. Some aquas and maybe some desaturation. Now let's see what preset might look good for this. And straight out of the box, futuristic number one looks great. And some final tweak to the mask layer on the background and my wife could do with a bit more saturation and a little less highlights on the skin. Here's an image of myself in Piccadilly Circus and using this new Photoshop style of masking, it's really easy to navigate through the mask icons and go in and make localized changes fast and in some situations eliminates the need to even open the image in Photoshop. And because we have tools like Luminance Range, we can now make changes similar to that of Luminosity masks in Photoshop. So what's next for Lightroom and Adobe? Will there be just one application that you only ever need to use to catalog and edit your photos from start to finish? Probably not, but if you find Photoshop too complicated to get your head around, then Lightroom has just made some of those Photoshop features even more accessible and user-friendly. So here's a quick look at my acceptance speech for passing 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Play tape. After 18 months and two weeks delivery time, I finally get my YouTube play button for 100,000 subscribers. Let's open this puppy up. You've just done something very few YouTube creators accomplish. You had an astonishing 100,000 people subscribe to your channel. Oh my god.